Hey everyone, it's uh, episode two of The Board. Just want to say a massive thanks to everyone for all the likes, the comments, the engagement on episode one. Hope you found that valuable and uh, got lots of info to, for today's session. So on today's session, I've got my phone here and the purpose of that is I've got a whole bunch of numbers written down to go through today. So if you get confused on any of the numbers, wind it back, it's a video, it's the best thing about it. Uh, press play again, replay, whatever you need, write it down while you're going along. We're going to get through it, okay? So today's topic is all about pocket profits plus paper loss equals more pocket profits. What that means is basically we are so stuck with the idea of negative gearing, which means losing money on your property to be able to claim a tax deduction that will help you recover your losses in the investment. And people do that basically so they can go through this shorter term period of you know having taxable losses reducing their income tax getting taxed back ideally but holding out so they can have some growth on the property to eventually make the profits in the long term that's the whole reason why most people um, have properties that are negatively geared, negatively geared so for today it's talking about okay wait we can actually have properties that are positively geared still have a loss on paper giving me that negative gearing deduction, which then in total equals more pocket profits because it's not like you lost money to get the paper loss to get more pocket profits. You've gained money plus the loss and in total that now equals more pocket profits. So gaining money before the tax return, gaining money with more tax return and then equals more pocket profits. So this scenario is um, a scenario for a customer that you know, I've been discussing things with recently and looking to help them out. And this is actually a, a like for like property almost that's something in my, my own portfolio. So I've got some numbers here to go through and then I'll walk you through this whole scenario and how this works. But what's really important to note is I'm not a tax advisor. Um, I'm just someone who's been through this step multiple times. You know, I've got a property portfolio of nine properties across four states that generated me a passive income to leave work. So today's example is not in any way advice, it's more so a case study going through that and please double check anything with an accountant um, to make sure that you know, the numbers are looking okay in your scenario because it could be different from person to person. Alright, let's run through it. So this scenario here, I've got my phone here, we're going to get through the numbers. We've got someone with a 100k income and the tax payable based on an ATO salary app that I looked at is around 26,632. So when we're looking at a property that could deliver this sort of structure, we found ourselves what we call a dual OC property. So a dual occupancy. Now in this dual occupancy property, we had a three plus one structure. So three bedrooms on one side where one tenant could live, and then another one bedroom on the other side where another tenant could live. Ideally, you've got two tenancies delivering you two pieces of income. So for this property, we're looking at a price range of 430k up to about 460k. Okay, so this customer scenario, this customer has about 75k in savings. So that's kind of cover the deal, any professional fees, um, our fees at Investigit, and still have money left over for you. All right. Okay. Now the rate for this income. Uh, the rent for this property. Now the rent for this property per week, we have 590 per week. So the one in my portfolio purchased some time ago is 585 um, per week. Some other customers who have helped out are getting 595 per week and I'm um, looking to increase my own soon. And then this one we're going to go bang smack in the middle at 590 per week. Okay. Now on an annual sum, we're looking at about 30 780 of income. So $30,780 per annum of rental income. Okay? Just so we don't lose space on this board, we're going to come back up to that number. Okay, so we're left off with rental income on this type of property of $30,780 or $590 per week. Now let's talk through the expenses. So these are the expenses of the property where we're looking at property management, interest, rates, water, landlord insurance. They're the core expenses you'll have on a home when purchasing a property, okay? So 
I'm not going to run through all the details of each of these expenses, but if we on the board itself, but if we talk through it, uh, we were looking at, at the property management of anywhere between you know seven to eight percent. Um, we're looking at interest of roughly fifteen thousand four hundred and eighty dollars. So we can pop that one up as separate. So fifteen four eighty. Now that's percent on a, based on a four percent interest rate and a 90% loan. So quite highly leveraged. So this person really wanted to get their foot into the door and I did too start off with this sort of leverage when I purchased this type of property. But obviously that leverage has come down significantly from debt reduction as well as equity growth. Cool, all right. So now when we tied up the other, so we're gonna call that interest, okay? 4%, 90% debt, okay? Now, with the non-interest expenses, so property management at a seven to eight percent, rates were roughly you know thirty-two hundred dollars per annum. Uh, water was roughly twelve hundred dollars in terms of cost to landlord, and then everything else was uh, you know cost back to the tenant. Insurance was around you know eleven to thirteen hundred dollars as well per annum. Putting all those non-interest expenses, so that's interest. We're looking at non-interest at about seven thousand. $848. Okay, so if we're looking at the total deductible expenses, we're looking at around 23328. So I'm going to clear this part. 23328 are your deductible expenses. If we pop in our principal and interest, you know, how good is that? We now want to look at using that rent to not only cover its expenses, but let's make sure we can reduce the debt too. So in, in a sense, we're actually reducing our leverage on this property and increasing our equity space through simply reducing debt. Okay. Now the principal portion of this debt is $6,696. So our total expenses on this property are 30, 0, 2, 4. So great, we've got a property at 90% debt that's actually able to not only generate enough rental income to pay its expenses, but help pay your loan payments down too. Now the gap between the two is roughly about $756 per annum. So that's the first stage of pocket profit, okay? We're looking at a pocket profit of $756 per annum after our interest plus principal. And if we consider principal down payment as part of our pocket profit because the tenant, the rent that we're collecting, the two tenants are actually helping pay down our debt too. We're looking at a total pocket profit. If we put the 6,000 here, $6,696. Of seven thousand four hundred and fifty-two, so we're looking at an initial pocket profit of seven thousand four hundred and fifty-two, which is made up in two portions. All our deductible expenses coming down. So the two portions are seven hundred and fifty-six dollars in your cash and in pocket, and six six ninety-six in your pocket to then transfer to pay down the debt. So debt is being reduced by the tenant, and cash in your pocket by the tenant. Okay. So the total is 7452. Now, if we have a look at this fig uh, figure over here, before I rub this off, we want to look at our total expenses. If we have these, this total expense of 30024, it's actually missing a magic number. What that magic number is, depreciation. So for those who don't know what depreciation is, depreciation is basically a, a tax write-off we're given that accounts for the loss in the actual build structure of the property. So our land is appreciating, our building is depreciating. So we are given that tax deduction from that depreciation aspect. Now since it's a new build, we're actually looking at a significant depreciation amount. And for this property, the same one in my portfolio, we're looking at a depreciation amount of $20,000 in its first full year. Eventually, that amount decreases because the value of the build itself is decreasing over time. But let's take the first full year as a number to go with. So now, our expense from 30,024 
We're not going to consider that because that includes our principal. We're just going to look at our interest or slash deductible debt. So the debt that you can have as deductions on tax. Okay? Let's have a look at that now. So if we're looking at our deductible debt, that deductible debt that we had written down before, which was our total deductible expenses, which is including interest and non-interest expenses, the figure was 23328. Okay? Let's add depreciation into this, the 20,000. In the first full financial year, we get roughly total deductible expenses of 43,328. Okay? 43,328 is our deductible expenses. So remember, on the first example, we had pocket profits of $756 plus the principal pay down of 6696 bringing the total pocket profit to $7,452. So now we're looking at depreciation involved and we're now looking at the second section, our paper loss. So we've already made our profit, which is paying down a loan and collecting cash. Now the second is, what are we actually losing on paper? Paper being our total tax deduction, deductible expenses, less the income we generate on this property. Now this being our total deductible expenses, Let's take away the income that we first had. So if you remember, it was $5.90 per week at $37.80 per annum. So $37.80 per annum. Now, if, we've been, if you've been confused in the whole rub off the board, right back, rub off the board, rewind it, play it back, this will be exciting, okay? So, total now, we're sitting at a loss on paper of around $12,548 per annum, or in the first year as such. So let's just rub that one off. Let's get this one here. Okay. So now, we've got a loss of $12,548 in our first year of this asset. So we're up to paper loss. How does that now equal more pocket profits? Okay, if you remember, our taxable income for the year was 100 k if we take into account now our new loss, let's have a look at what our new taxable income is. Okay? We'll change up the color so we can leave this last part on the board. Okay. This is where it gets real fun. Now, the uh, new income. Our new income here is now 87,452. So after your adjustments of your pocket profits and paper loss, we're basically now saying, hey, what you should be paying a tax on is this income because you've made a loss on paper of 12548 So the tax payable on this income here for this financial year is estimately around 21738 How much do we pay before? We paid 26,632, or we're due to pay 26,632 if this is our income for the year. But we should have paid 21,738 based on this property scenario. So now when we look at that, that difference between the two, before any fees from your accountant for the preparation of the return, we're looking at around close to $5,000. 489. Nine, four. Okay? So now what we've done is take our first profit, pocket, pocket profits, our paper loss of 12548, and now we get more pocket profits of 4894. So what's our total return? We've got this 4894. Let's recap our total return of the deal. Okay? Our total return on the deal. Let's rub this off because that is not our income anymore. All right. Our total profit or total return on the deal is $756. Let's rub that one off. 
$756 in cash, more rent than our expenses, 6000 $696 in our P&I or principal and interest, our principal down payment, our debt is going down, not from you, from your investment, your tenants, your cash flow. Then we've got our tax return estimate before your accounting fees of roughly 4894 which means our total profit is 12346 so there we have it. Pocket profits plus paper loss equals more pocket profits. It's not always about a negative gearing or a positive gearing. It's about getting the outcome of profits to generate cash flow to pay down debt and paper loss is a plus. $12,346. What an amazing outcome. Reducing your tax, giving you cash back and most importantly helping you move your investment journey forward. How much cash does this person have? $75,000 and still has money left over. That's it from episode 2. We're the experts in wealth creation, helping you take action.